say something. Does that mean you just had a prayer in this month? Like, <laughs> 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 All right, welcome to the first episode of DRP Podcast. I want your host Pat. To the left of me, we got Lisa. Hello. To the left of her, we got Moon. What's it there? And first things first, Lisa, how you doing? I'm all right, hanging in here. Excited for our first episode. How you doing, Moon? I'll tell you that I'm ready, man. Let's dive in, brother. Liquor <laughs> <laughs> kicking in. <laughs> first thing I want to say is, can both of y'all swim? Yeah, uh, yeah, I be swimming in that motherfucker. Back struggles, side struggles, scuba <laughs> diving. You hear me? You be drowning. Ain't afraid to drown. Ain't a little deep up in the ocean. Oh, oh my yeah, he can't, he can't swim. <laughs> Niggas that swim like that can't swim. Right. <laughs> I cannot swim, and I have a pool in my backyard, an in-ground pool, and I cannot swim. I don't open it for that reason. We open them up. That was about to be the doggy paddle or something. <laughs> you know you can swim? Yes, sir. Yeah, I can swim. Uh, I can swim actually good, like, as long as I'm moving. I can't, <laughs> tread. I can't tread that long. Once I'm swimming, I just got to get to where I'm going, touch that wall, and get back the other way. I can swim, depending on the circumstances. Yeah. What's the circum? Give me a circumstances where you can't swim. Uh, drop me in the middle of the ocean. I'm not gonna come up like a white person. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. No, I'm I'm out of there. Two point two seconds. No, I can swim. Like if I'm in a pool, like, I can swim. I never really tried that hard. I think I'm gonna try again one of these times, but. Okay. Because, like, uh, I don't know. I be feeling like that's something I do need to learn how to do because I don't know. Because if the kid, if the kids are drowning. You won't be able to save them. I don't know. Because I don't <laughs> want to scream. <laughs> Please, though. <laughs> so, if you can't swim, if your, kids is dr- your kid is drowning in the pool, what what do you do? Not in the pool, in any water. <sighs> I'm going there. I can, I feel like I can say it on, but I ain't going to make it out there, motherfucker. Well, that's that's a risk I'm willing to take every time. You know? But you can't swim, so you're going to be able to save your kids even though you can't swim. No, I can swim. I just can't swim like a motherfucker. I can swim okay. like... Okay. Enough to save your kids. Yeah. Okay. What about you? I can't... <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't... I, you know what? That's hard. That's a hard one. Yeah. So what you gonna say? You gonna let your baby drown? Like? I didn't say that. See, you jumped to conclusions. I didn't ask the question. <laughs> well, you gotta clarify. Because I'm thinking like that's almost is that like suicide if you can't swim? A little bit. Uh, a little bit. I mean, it ain't suicide. It's like a, I say, it's like a like a like a assisted heroic, suicide. Heroic act. Yeah. <laughs> like the kid have you kill yourself. Like why why the fuck you you drown and you can't swim? What you do? Hey, I mean, assisted unalive. Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> no, but swimming, I I can't. Can't swim. I can swim, but I, it's like, bruh. Can you float? I, yeah. I. You know what? I would give out some dog-ass instructions to the kids if they was over. No, first. <laughs> <laughs> kick the lid, son. Kick the right. lid. That's about it. That's Just about it. Back, look up in the sky. So you're going to stand there on the side instead of jumping in. You're going to stand, stand on the side and give instructions, basically. That's what you're telling us, right? Uh, no, what I'm telling you is... It's a calculated decision, and it's not that easy to make. Okay, so <laughs> while you're making not... that calculated decision, your kids just will be in the pool. It's all, a calculation only take one point five seconds. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really calculate that long. <laughs> uh, I'm just thinking like so. But if you know you can't swim, you still jump in there. Do you jump in there because you can't live with the fact that your kid gonna die and you gonna be here like I didn't do nothing? Yeah, because I'm gonna be in your face. Like, why the hell you let your kids drown? Well, what if you got multiple kids and now you decided there and they all drown? No, just no, just one. But you got multiple kids and you can't swim. What do you do? What do they say on that movie? One band, one sound. That's right. Y'all so they all got to jump in? Yes. That sounds like the Jim Jones. That's that Kool-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, some man, somebody somebody in a household got to know us. Somebody got to be able to go in and pull somebody out that motherfucker. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, I rely on my oldest to save us if someone was drowning. Okay, cool. Yeah, somebody got to. So you, we relying on you? Yeah, I, okay. as long as, long as uh, it's a wall, I can grab a motherfucker swim to the wall. If I can't get, got nothing to take that ass to, it's over. What about your family relying on in your household? Uh, it's going to have to be me. Okay. It's, yeah, it's going to have to be me, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, so we see what we need to do uh, with all these. Yeah. The winner, we got to get them everybody to swim mm, classes. Definitely. Shit, the world full of water. Shit, we surrounded by five lakes, so that shit gets spilling over. Shit, it's just it's <laughs> and that's bound to happen. Like, either you swim, or you know, like on the airplane when they say like get the life jacket from under the seat. Mm-hmm. 
Get the life jacket and float. Have a like like a raft, like in the, like a, a man bag or something. You know, like you can just <laughs> you not can just, the raft in the fanny. <laughs> right, I'm like in the man bag. <laughs> make sure to cover the rope. Read the Amazon description. Make sure to cover the rope. No, I can't. I can't. <laughs> And be noticed said on Don't Be a Man is if you can't swim, you're bound to drizzle. <laughs> <laughs> and he for sure said that too. <laughs> I can't with y'all. I can't. All right, y'all. So let's discuss something. Let's get into y'all fears. I know we discussed y'all emotions, but I just want to get all of y'all today. So tell me some fears that you guys have. We'll start with you first, Pat, since we started with Rich Moon with his uh, emotions last time. Fears. Mm-hmm. What fears do you have? Uh, hmm. You should have asked me this like a few years ago. Mm, why? Because <laughs> now I really don't feel like... You overcame them? Not that I overcame it. It's just like I don't care no more. Oh, damn. Okay. You know, I'm at the point now where it's just like, if it's going to happen, it has to be... I have to prove it. Like You know how like when you're a kid and somebody, everybody's scared to go in that one room? <clears throat> I would go in the room, not because I was brave. I was just as scared as them. But for me, I have to go and I have to get like some type of confirmation that that thing is in there. Mm-hmm. So I'm scared of it. You know, I would hate yeah. to be outside scared okay. and I ain't sure that, man. you go in there and nothing <laughs> in there. So I'd be scared and kind of like easing towards it. I guess it's like white people in scary movies. <laughs> I actually Jesus. understand why they you go run to a You run to a Right. You know, right. Maybe in the closet in his room all day, you know. Like, hmm. So you don't have any nightmares. There's nothing that every so often wakes you up out of your sleep and you're like, dang, this is really bothering me. You know what? I'll just tell my wife, like, I really have really conscious um, dreams. Okay. Like, I'm conscious in my dreams for real, most times. Mm-hmm. And it ain't really so much um, nightmares. You know how, like, have you ever had the thing where, like, you feel like you're suffocating yeah, or something like that? Yeah, I hate those. So, I guess if I'm, I would do something like consciously jump off a building in my dream. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because in my mind, it's like, this is a dream. You know what I mean? Oh, so you, okay. You wake up and you're at the bottom of the bed, for real. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I haven't had a, a nightmare in, in, a, in a real long time, for real. Like, I haven't had nothing where I was just, like, scared. I think the... The closest thing to a nightmare, like for me now, is just like you know, you have a dream, and it's like um, your wife got the pool guy with the pool guy, or something, oh, but you man. ain't got no pool. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I think that's the closest thing. It's, so you know you're why? Because, in the water, huh? <laughs> because you really be powerless. It's like what do you? It's like since I be kind of conscious sometimes. Like what do you do? How do you respond to that? Okay. Okay. Speaking of powerless, bro, you ever had that one dream? You fighting, bro, and you hitting this nigga hard as fuck, and he that just eating your shit, bro. He walking right towards you. Yeah, he just, oh, 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 he, he just nah. eating them bitches like, nigga, you a hoe, what's up? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that, uh, uh, that's, one, the, like, that's one of like, the powerless dreams. But uh, as far as like nightmares, I've been having this dream since like about 12, 13. It's like the world ending. It's like, uh, I actually know the spot because I thought this shit was going to stay, be true to so my actually stayed over there. It's called, uh, I forgot the name. I think it's called like the Meadows. It's right on uh, 13 and like Little Map behind Myers and shit. Mm-hmm. And so I came outside and it just like asteroids falling. So like if it hit the ground, it blows shit up. But if it hit like a person, it turned into a demon. Mm-hmm. And then that shit like hit my little cousin. And that motherfucker turned to a demon and just got to eat niggas alive. And then <laughs> I would just wake up. <laughs> you laugh, but I'm trying to stay serious. Yeah, like, like, yeah. That was like a crazy dream. I had that dream probably like 10 times. So I low key was waiting on that shit to happen for mm. like until I got grown. But I was waiting on that shit to happen for like 10 years. Like, so you never researched why you were having that dream? I didn't even know I could research that Question. shit. That's what I said. Is it the same cousin every time in the dream? I don't even know that motherfucker. But in that dream, that's my cousin. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, I was like, so maybe that's a sign. It's, it's telling you. Yeah, like that motherfucker deal. But it's like, it was my cousin in the dream, but I still ain't met that cousin. But it was like mm-hmm. so vivid because like my auntie literally stayed in that apartment and then you come outside and it's like the same thing. It could be something where, over. you know, you telling your auntie, I don't know, maybe she needs to move or something good is going to happen. Man, Anything. she didn't move from that motherfucker to 20 years ago. It just okay. like, but the dream just be happening. Then like, this shit weird as fuck. Like, I would have a dream somebody died and they had died. Like, mm-hmm. with them, like, 
I ain't gonna say like a year, but they would die like within those like three or four years. So it'd be like what kind of weird ass shit. So do you that? ever communicate to that person like, dang, I had a dream that you died? No, I don't want to tell nobody not. No, crazy. because that is... No, but if I'm in, like... If he see me, like, in the gas station, I'm buying, like, some Doritos... Hey, Pat, man! Hey, hey listen! Hey, nigga, hey, I woke hey, up, bro! Hey, hey. I haven't seen you in about six months, but, hey, you died in my <laughs> dream, bro. Yeah, like, but so that, No, serious. That's a serious thing. Like, um, it could be, you know, God telling you to, you know, speak. I don't know the exact words, and I don't want to um, say the wrong thing, but... Sometimes, um, from my understanding, you know, the Lord will put certain things on you so you can speak to that someone and hopefully by you explaining that dream to them, it can make them change things around in your life. Yeah. Like, I've had some, some other dreams. I don't know. I don't know. So it's do business and shit, but like, the situation happened when my husband got locked up. Mm-hmm. And then I tell them, they're like, man, I don't want to hear that shit. You feel me? It's like, bad luck. But this shit will happen. So right. it's like, nigga. You know what I'm trying saying? Trying to tell you. Yeah. And then, like, the one time I tried to tell him, it was too late. I got sidetracked that day, and that shit actually happened. So, wow. like, my dreams be coming true. So, I hate having no dreams about people dying because it's like, you know, I guess you like, manifesting death on me. It's like, right. it's that's a lot weird. to take in. You need to definitely look into that and see how you can, what can you achieve to. Not stop it, but to you know turn things around. That's it. Yeah. So does the, is that one of your fears? You know. Uh. What I, fears do you? So, have? my like honestly, God, biggest fear in life is leaving this planet and not having my family straight. That's mm-hmm. like the biggest fear ever. Like, oh, yeah, I, I don't really fear nothing. Like, of course, I can't win every fight, but that person that's fighting me just gotta beat my ass and. It can happen. I'm not no fucking Floyd Mayweather. So, yeah, so wait, someone to I don't you. really yeah. have like um I said it, my biggest fear is, is leaving here and, and, and my family not in like good standings. Uh that's why I feel like life insurance is like very important and get as mm-hmm. many policies as you can. But other than that, I don't I used to fear dying. I still do because like I don't I mean, I don't even want to get religious with this shit. But no, I, that's I what, that was what I was going to say. I was going to take it in. That's my number one nightmare that I have. And I typically have those nightmares when I'm, if I could just be, you know, 100% honest, when I'm dealing with someone who has, who I know is not right, mm-hmm. I typically had nightmares of dying and I wake up with full panic mode, screaming, crying, and you know, it, it sucks because, you know, then my oldest is there to take care of me and help me, like, calm down when I'm having that panic attack. And I think that's my worst fear. And those are nightmares I have the most is uh, dying. And my, you know, number one fear is leaving my kids before they of age to, you know, take care of themselves because mm-hmm. I don't trust anyone to take care of them. You know what? That's crazy because my... Um... <clears throat> <laughs> my 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 biggest fear is actually the opposite. It was actually like outliving everybody. Oh gosh! <laughs> <laughs> of course, the pack gonna be a hundred and fifty. Right. Big pack. Yeah, no, because I get to the thing like you know how when you say like you have a dream and somebody died. Like I have a thing where it's like you know how you sit there and you can kind of like picture your future. Mm-hmm. If I can't picture a future with you. It's almost like, damn, like if I can't even in my imagination think of like mm-hmm. you in 10, 20 years, it's like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I can get that. I think that's, that's good. But, to out, have. but outliving people, like, I, I, that's my biggest fear. I feel like I'm just going to outlive everybody. And you don't want to. And that's like, that's crazy because you can be like, shout out if you hit a buck 20. Damn that you out here with your grandkids, everybody dead type shit. Your grandkids gotta take care of you. Like I yeah. wanna be old enough to watch and see a wash my own ass. And then once I'm I can't wash my ass no more, it's over. I don't want nobody to have to wash my ass. Like, yeah, you know that's how I feel too. I don't wanna get to that point. And I and I think when I say like outliving everybody, I'm not even necessarily thinking like I'm gonna be like hundred and thirty years old. Like I'm thinking like short sighted. Like mm. when I'm forty five, who's still gonna be here? Because mm-hmm. black people like yeah, we talking yeah. about 120, <laughs> like but you know, do we really make it to 120? Yeah, because yeah. 86 for a regular person, black person, you about what 52, right? You know what I mean? Right. Like you really out here, like you know, uh, like a real senior citizen, like you ain't even no senior for real. Yeah. So, with having those fears, do you guys think that 
you know, it's okay to put your kids out when they turn 18 since you have a fear of, you know, leaving here and not. I'm not. I'm not putting my kids up, bro. Long, long yeah, as you, uh, I'm not even gonna say long as you doing so. Of course we. Okay, so our people, I ain't gonna say our people because I mean I wouldn't put out at 18, but it was just the norm. Like you, like dip. But I was, I probably left the crib at I think I was 20 when I got my first apartment, uh, 1920. But um, I see people do that, and that's that shit weak because. For one, you had to make sure you raise your child and you got them in the right mind state and just got that shit together to where they can go out on their own. The eighteen year old kid, that's still a kid, bro. Mm-hmm. You damn near the kid to you, shit, everybody ain't grown until they twenty three out here still kids on the mind. So Absolutely. I wouldn't put my children out knowing that they're not prepared for this life. I just want my kids. I don't even need no money. I'm gonna make you pay bills, and that bill money gonna go into a town and help you get your own spot or whatever when you leave this. When you leave here, because at the end of the day, I still gotta pay the bills. I'm not about to take my kids' money. Right. You pay this. You put that. I'm gonna put that shit up for you. Or you pay your mom. She will put it up for you. And that's money for you. I don't think people should just put their kids out and set them for failure because you rushing your kids out. They ain't got nothing going on. They don't know what to do. They don't know credit. None of this shit. And you just set it, setting them up for failure, basically rushing them out the household. So I don't, I don't think that's cool, and I don't really recommend that for uh, people raising children. What you gonna do with your kids, Pat? Throwing them out? Uh, you no, already I, said you're gonna let them drown, so shit. Um, no, I didn't say I was, <laughs> no, I, 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 said I was gonna try some alternative <laughs> methods in my one point five second. <laughs> no, okay. but putting them out? No, I don't think I, I can. I can put them out. No, um, I think um, what what I plan to do is almost like. Um, just kind of like, listen, when you turn 18, obviously you don't really have nothing figured out mm-hmm. for real. But I think uh, a lot of times the parents who have put their kids out, I think it was more so like the battle of just like respect and disrespect right. and also mm-hmm. like out of necessity. Um, I don't think a lot of people get put out because, you know, just for the parents can just have free reign. Yeah. A lot of times we just really don't have the luxury of staying around because mm-hmm. like in our families, somebody always needs somewhere to go. God, somebody always got a, you know, a situation where they need to be rescued. And, you know, I think uh, for me, like, cause I left, I moved out when my senior year, I kind of moved in with my grandma I was just going to school from her house. Um, but I didn't, I didn't move back in. You know what I mean? I went to, I went, you know, straight to college and then came back with Cedar Point, you know, stayed with my dad for a couple months and then um, was straight on my own. And it's not really so much because um, I I was, I had, I, I felt like I had to because it was just so many people already that need somewhere to go. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And my mom was like one of those people that, you know, if, 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 her, door, if, her, if her door is open, you can come in. Okay. You know what I mean? So for me, it was almost like, I feel like I can figure this thing out. You know what I mean? But do do I feel like um, I didn't have to figure certain things out at certain times? Yes. You know, I wouldn't feel like, um, I don't feel, I, I feel like if I would have stayed in, in the house a lot longer, I could have had a lot more things secure before I actually got mm-hmm. into the world. Because when you get out here, now you just trying to survive. You know what I mean? Yeah. And trying to survive when you're 18, 19, 20, that's tough. That's tough. Yeah, I said that about my kids. I told them, actually driving back from my daughter volleyball game today, I told her, like, you're trying to be that. You're not trying, but I'm speaking into existence that you're going to be an anesthesiologist. So there's no way that I'm going to kick you out the oh, house yeah. when you turn 18. She wants to go off to college in a different state. Okay, that's fine. I might follow her, you know, just being that overprotective mom. But it's no way possible I'm going to allow her to go there, study, go to medical school, have a job, taking care of herself. No, I have to make sure that. As her mom, I'm financially stable. That way she can be financially stable without having a job. And she's secure in whatever state that she's in. So she can solely focus on going to school or whatever she you know, might want to do. I don't want that burden to be on her to like, oh, I got to go to work. But then I got to study. Mm-hmm. I don't want that on her. And I want, I told 
oh, I'm like, yes, stay with me as long as you can. It's always going to be a room that here for you. So let me ask y'all that. So if a woman tell you, you could be, you know, giving her head or you could just be doing your thing. You think you just got it all down packed. You think you handling your business. And she say, uh-uh, not like that. But let me show you something. Do it like this. Uh, let me position your head or let me position your body to do it like this. You think that you got to take that um, constructive criticism better than us women or are you offended? You know, give me some insight to that. Okay, better. I don't think nobody really take um, criticism well, but I would say 10 years ago, I probably would have took it as less. Maybe I'd probably be not, I wouldn't say offended, mm. but you also, you just kind of like, you just feel like you, you burned at the stake. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> you about to get, you in front of the whole town and your head is in that thing and you like this and they're like, you know. This guy, you know, did this. You got your ass on the cross. Like, like Jesus. Jesus. You know what I mean? You need that energy on the radio. You know what I mean? It's like, you, you, did, you did this. You just feel, you feel, you feel judged. But I think now, I would rather you say it. Like, I, I'm yeah. at the point now where it's like, say it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Who wants someone to tell you that you're doing it wrong? Because, uh, like, I feel like. I don't think you, I don't think you do it. See, this, that's, this is why I say say it. Because I don't think I'm doing it wrong. Right. Right, I'm just right. doing it in a way that don't work for you. Say, God, right. make you do what it do. Baby. Glass, half, <laughs> you say glass half full. That's how I think. Like, I ain't yeah. doing it wrong. It's just, this 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 method just don't work for you. I've been scared yeah. to tell me and like, ugh, that don't feel right. I don't. I don't like that side. Like, I would feel like um, should tell me. Cause I feel like young. When you young, when you first start getting to it, you just like you gotta beat that motherfucker up, make it scream, all that shit. But as you grow older, it's like. You gotta beat that motherfucker up easily because you gotta, you gotta enjoy it. You it's know a, what I'm saying? It's you a gotta, journey. Or plastic, it's you gotta journey. massage that poison. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, you gotta kind of like, like I said, as younger, you were just taught, man, beat that thing up, man, make a screen, yo, right, right, right. all that shit. But as you grow up, you like, they don't want that motherfucker beat up all the time. Mm-hmm. You gotta sometimes you gotta hit him with the Floyd Mayweather. You know it's a sweet science. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? Floyd you gotta Floyd hit him with the shoulder roll. You know what I'm saying? By the way, working on your jab. You know what I'm saying? You just gotta you gotta take your time. And you gotta learn. It's now you can have a dog guest routine that work for everybody, but then it's like you gotta have that. That shit that's don't get hurt, right? Uh, do it for the little You do it for the little saint. Right. Yeah, man, yeah, my nigga trigger get him with that Jupiter love, baby. <laughs> but nah, so it's like you just gotta you gotta know your partner, man. Everybody, everybody body different, everybody like this different, everybody like that different. So you can't really take the criticism bad because you can say you'd have hit sixty chicks with this and it worked. And then you just hit seven chicks with that and they're like, they ain't really rocking with that when you like well, I just knocked those 60 bitches down my head. Bit, you know what I'm saying? Your chest, well, but then you still got to take this hit of race. Okay, well, somebody like this, like this, and they like that, like that. So you just got to finesse your routine. Be open like, to adjustments, gotta, right? Yeah, yeah. It's all about adjustments. Cause, 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 so you say, do men take uh, sexual criticism better than women? Mm-hmm. I believe so. Yes. I, because I think women... When I went, even the word criticism, they, it, you know what? <laughs> Here we I, go. I think women, it like you will feel judged. I, man, we, I'm not gonna say we take it good, but we don't have a, our, the way when it's given to us, there's no retaliation to the criticism. Yeah. Uh, but that's when women are comfortable to say, hey, I don't like the way this feel or hey, you doing this wrong. Like most women is not not going to say anything. You have to be really comfortable with that person. Mm-hmm. Like you might be with a new partner and be like, man, that shit was horrible. I wish they would do it like this. Wish they would do it like that. And it's going to take some time to open up versus y'all me. You be like, no, I don't, don't suck it like that. Do it like this. Or dang, your knees gave out already. And hey, we're like, we let working you know. hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now we have to know. work extra hard. I'd be like, okay, like, let me get my knees better. Let me do this. Let me. You know, put a pillow under the motherfucker. <laughs> right, yeah. right. I can't lay on the pillow and suck, and I gotta get up and I gotta do this. Like it's 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 a lot that y'all throw on us women, but we always tiptoe and I, you know, I think we touched on that earlier. Like we don't have that platform where we're comfortable to say certain things, and without we don't ever want to hurt a man ego. Mm-hmm. And that, my uncle told told me that a few years ago before he passed away, may he rest in peace. Said Lisa, you have to be careful with your words and how you say things. You're so strong, you're bullheaded, but 
you don't want to hurt a man's ego. That's the worst thing you can do is hurt a man's ego. So I've been keeping that in the back of my mind, like, hey, how do I say this? How do I communicate this effectively? That way, you know, I won't hurt his ego, but I still want to get out what makes me upset or what makes me comfortable or feel good to me. Get what I'm saying? Yeah, I think you got, that's why you got to, I think that's why, um, when, you, when you really think about it, it's people who've been together for 20, 30, 40 years who still don't, you know, or can't talk about sex openly. Mm. So I would say when you do have these conversations, one, don't have it in the spur of the moment. Right. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you had that conversation over breakfast while y'all laughing. Yeah, that's, uh-huh. that's good. Make it comfortable. Like, yeah. Don't that's have a conversation when you pissed off because now you just it's just venom. <laughs> now you think yeah, you ain't shooting eat my pussy um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just feel like like it's about it's definitely communication. If you with somebody, you want to make sure you you getting them together. So I would prefer like if somebody tell me like, okay, well, you know, I kind of you was going too fast or too slow or you was. You ain't last long enough. Man. <laughs> oh, you, See, see it, that's a whole different that's, 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 You know what? Hey, listen. Listen. <laughs> you lasted two minutes. That wasn't enough for me, okay? My roles do better. Yeah, hey, 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 listen. You going to two, you going to two minutes. Yeah, yeah. You better. But me at work talking about time going by slow. <laughs> So if, if, the, if, if you if it's nine fifty, you get off work at ten. You like, damn, this ten minutes going by slow. Lab, Don't man. come home and say that's a fast ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> ten minutes. Is it ten minutes? Or, is it ten or is it ten? But I'm getting pleasure good out of time, this not ten. Long time, yeah. Yeah. Right. No, no, I'm getting pleasure out of this ten. When I'm at work, that's different. Like, oh, I'm ready to go. Like, this ain't no pleasure. But you know, as you, as you get as you get older, like, well, as I get older, I feel like um, it's really it's, it's really a, a journey for real. Like, if both people. Are are not like enjoying it at the end. It's like it's it's a wash. Yeah. Like if if you didn't have a good time, it's almost like I could I can't have a good time. I don't care what the the, the finality is. And I think the misconception when you come when you do talk about it is women do think just because a man come that he enjoyed himself. And yeah, I think, we gonna come. <laughs> hey, that's one thing. For sure. we'll get we yours. But there that's are but, 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 but there are levels to it for men too. I think a lot of times yeah. men think, well, you got yours, and he be like. I did, but I didn't. Like you yeah. know how like you got lotion and you got like a little bit left, and you like. So you still like, 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 damn, I need to, get, I need to get, I got to last one more day. That's, hey, listen, that's a whole different ball game. Yeah. You got a brand new, uh, you know what I mean? That's like, that Detroit shit. That's that that goes into you know how <laughs> Detroit y'all are. Yeah, that explains it all right but there. But if I could take it like ten years ago, if you asked me, do I take? And criticism better? No, I wouldn't have said no. I would say no. Okay. But today, yes, I can. Yeah, I, I don't really have much of an ego for okay. real, like in, in in that area. You put your pride aside. Yeah. Okay. But, but talking about sex is something that that's something that you should talk about in the beginning. And I'm mm-hmm. not talking about just what you want to do. I'm just talking about like um your expectations expectations mm-hmm. there's a lot of things are sexual conversations that you, nobody really highlight for real like you will you will, you'll understand what somebody's like thing is just in general conversation you know what i mean i think you got to find just that balance and lasting a long time is is only because you didn't spend enough time you know warming the car up <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> it's different if you want a car up for 20 minutes by the time you get in there to pull off you can't <laughs> You're right. You can't just start your sometimes, car and then go. And, <laughs> that's a different type of thing. Sometimes I can say, okay, yeah, he didn't get that first of all. Like, yeah. yeah so it's I, a journey. I, okay. It depends. <laughs> <laughs> I think the thing is, it has to be it has to be different every time. So if it's quick mm-hmm. this time, it's a journey the next time. The next time, you know, we went the hall road. You know? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Pat, you say you can't just go out there in January and get in the car and pull off on it. Warm it up. You're going to start stuttering at the stop sign. You're like, hey, now you're going to get the water. <laughs> Man, what? What can't worry about? You need some juice. Man. <laughs> you need some juice. <laughs> you got a warm towel and everything. You're like, you know what? Oh, man. But that is a good conversation to have at the beginning, just as financials as well. So we'll add that man. on there. So y'all have said a lot of Detroit shit. So how Detroit are y'all? Girl, I'm so Detroit. I got the glizzy in my pocket while I'm pumping my gas, bro. Hand on that bitch, ready to blow. Mm. Oh. You Detroit. I don't so Detroit. I need chili cheese on my napkins. You hear me? 
It's like putting chili cheese on a cake. No one I told you. <laughs> I think you so Detroit that you go to a specific colony that sell the same chili as the last one. You just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this one is better. Like, nigga, the same fries. Oh, man. I can't say how Detroit I am. I'm, I'm from the six mile, but I can't say how Detroit I am. Man, well, you went to Rosa Park. You did. Yeah, yeah. I went to Dumby. So, Dumby, right. oh, <laughs> I don't sold Detroit. So you be Boy, you better catch that bus. If you miss that bitch, they on your ass. Yeah, yeah. 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 You I was definitely on that six, six mile bus. bus. Right, I was yeah. definitely on that six hey. mile bus. Hey. So yeah, I'm definitely uh, Detroit. I think um, if I could go back, well, not go back, but I wish Detroit was. Um, how can I say it? Safe or in a right environment not to where I could have raised my kids in Detroit. I think growing up in a quote unquote hood is better than growing up in the suburbs. My kids miss out on so much. I'd be like, that's common sense. Why you don't know that? But I'm like, dang, damn, Lisa, they ain't grew up in the hood. So, you know, we had to know this. We had to do this. So it's like, I do wish I could, my kids could have grew up in Detroit and had that hood experience. I wish that. Yeah. But then it's like, it's like you worked so hard to to, to get your kids away from that shit because yeah. some of the shit we did grow up around, we had a business been around that shit. Yeah. I, but it molded and shaped us, though. It molded and shaped you, but it, it also, it's like they can't deal with a lot of the trauma, a lot of the shit we've seen. So I'm not even going to say that we we just come from a different area where we just got conditioned to being around fucked up shit. And yeah. these I, kids not ready for that. So I'm glad, like, I stay in the birds where my kids go to a better school to where they ain't got to deal with the shit I deal with. You know what I'm saying? Of yeah. course, it's it's going to be stuff everywhere at every school, but I just feel like, you know, our kids in a better area to where they can grow up and experience different things out of life and different programs and shit our schools didn't have. You know, Absolutely. so yeah, I'm, gra- I'm grateful for that. Yeah, I, I, I think even when we like, um, I just think our kids going to have uh, a different thing to work on when they get older. Mm-hmm. Like, I guess my thing was, you know, I can raise my kid and do the things that I thought that needs to be done differently. So when they get older, they teaching their kids something that they feel like need to be done. That's like a it's like a growth in that. I think the problem it come becomes when um, you feel like uh, you feel like that your kid you want your kid to have the things you didn't. But I think. And in life, you have to realize there's a lot of things that you had that your kid also need. Yeah. Okay. Kind of like we hold off on like the the parts where it's like, oh, he need to hear this or mm-hmm. she needs to hear this. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So I think for me, when it comes to the kids, and I, I would, I, you know, I got three boys, so it's hard. It's hard. For, see, when you got it's boys, weird. it's hard to like just use the word soft. Yeah. A lot because you don't want to put those descriptors on boys because when you use the word soft when you do when I do have all boys, what I would say is now kids are more in tune with their emotions than we mm-hmm. were in real time. Absolutely. So it comes off as soft, but really it's forcing us parents to be a little bit more accountable in real time about how we made them feel, what mm-hmm. we did, like what we did to make them sad, how we overstepped. Mm-hmm. And in real time, some of us really gotta apologize. Like yeah. a lot of us had to wait till we turn 35, our parents had diabetes, was on the um, in the bed with all the stuff hooked up to them. It's like, nah, I feel like I could tell you. You, were, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, you should have been telling me that shit. Yeah, but not kids are now like, yo, your kid would be like three, four, like, daddy, you know, you made me mad. It's like, damn. Yeah, my oldest got that really. And she's like, mm, I don't think you should have said that, or I don't like when you said it. I'm like, damn, okay. Like, I couldn't say that to my mom growing up. Like, I couldn't tell her, like, I don't like when you said that, or you made me, you heard my plans. Go upstairs to your room. But I, I think that's to have that floor open now for our kids, I think is really good. So, yeah. Yeah, I think that's dope too. Like, our parents, I feel like our parents should allow their children to express themselves because mm-hmm. we're not perfect and we might have learned from a, a, a I'm not going to say a bad example, but not the best example to where they didn't learn from the best example. So it's kind of like generational to where we are just figuring this shit out. So, you definitely should allow your kids to express themselves. And I also feel like I don't like when adults tell a kid, like, you know, stay in a child's place or you disrespecting me. No, I'm not disrespecting you. I'm just telling you how I'm not about to allow you to treat me. I got that. Mm-hmm. I got that a lot as a kid. Like, you, you sarcastic. You know, I, I'm really big on respect. But one thing, no matter how what age I was, when I feel like an adult is 
misrepresenting like a truth involving me, I'm gonna have to say something. Yeah, I ain't mm-hmm. going. You're not gonna lie on me or uh, uh, put no shit on me that I ain't did or none of that. And it's like, yeah, that's how my daughter is. How she she'll be open. Yeah, and yeah, we have to like we we. It's like. You know, it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a give and take because you know sometimes you do go in that old moon like when I was a kid like you thinking mm-hmm. like man you trying to but I think for me it's realizing that I don't own you as a kid. Yeah, yeah. my job is just to arm you with as much as possible. So mm-hmm. when you go out into the world and you face with different challenges, different situations that you kind of like. Yeah. Okay, my dad taught me something like in this, or he taught me something. I don't want to be like stay in the child's place because we're teaching our kids to be, you know, workers and, and not follow rules and, just, and not yeah. stand up for themselves. Yeah. Like, it's a lot of things that we're teaching our kids. And when they go out into the workplace and into the world, they, they are bullied by adults. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? There's a lot of adults who are being bullied. Yeah. In professional true. settings and workplaces and friendships, you know, so it's like it, you, like what I would say is, you never get too old for it. I think you always, or if it's not addressed, it's just gonna continue on until adulthood. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I, I, I can agree with that. I think a lot of our kids now, they're able to. Then back then, it's like okay, you didn't talk about it, we didn't hear about it. You know, everything was behind closed doors. You shut your mouth about it. And now our kids see our traumas. And one thing that I know I didn't realize until I became a uh, you know, well into my late 20s, early 30s is I had to give my mom a lot of grace because I don't know her traumas. I don't know exactly what my mom has been through. I know she had a lot. She has a lot of traumas and I know it's things that she hasn't healed from with her upbringing and she'll leave this earth and I would never know, but I know it's something there. So I extended a lot of grace to my mom with our upbringing. Like you said, it's necessarily, not necessarily that she did anything wrong with us of bringing us. My mom did a phenomenal job. She did the best that she could do being a single mom raising four kids. Um, I just think with my kids now, they see a lot of my trauma. They see a lot of what I go through because I'm more open versus like, oh, shush, we don't say that. We're not going to talk about that. Yeah. I tell my daughter everything. That way she won't have to go through those experiences that I've been through. And I think that's a, that's a great way to raise our children as opposed to hiding and, and trying to show them from a certain situation mm-hmm. because they're going to experience the same shit. So if you can get them the game and equip them early, okay, well, like me raising daughters, like, like, nigga, my daddy was, my daddy told me this shit. You're not about to run this game with me, bro. I'm already hip. So right. I got to give my daughters the game. I got to teach them how to be ladies from a man perspective. Their mama can teach them how to be ladies from a woman's perspective. But I still got to, you feel me? I got to drill this in the head, bro. Don't, don't let no nigga play with you. You feel right. me? Don't let nobody put their hands on you. None of that shit. I got to teach my, my daughters how to survive in this world. I damn near got to raise some white boys, but just be gentle with them because mm-hmm. they are women. Because I can't, I, my brothers, my uncles, whoever outlive me, I can trust them to protect my children while they there, but I got to raise my girls to be able to protect themselves. Mm-hmm. Even while I'm alive and I'm not there, so you got to raise your kids the right way to where they can be able to navigate through life. And they're like, "Oh, my daddy told me this. He warned me about this situation." So my daddy said, "Okay, well, if this happens, I got to do this. Or that happens, I got to mm-hmm. do that." So you got to give your kids a game. You got to arm them not only just mentally, physically, self defense, mm-hmm. fucking finance. I want to talk about money, and credit, till I got grown. So you just gotta arm your children and um, get them ready. This world fucked up, so you gotta get them kids ready to live in this fucked up world without you. Yeah, but I think that's a blessing for coming from you and you, Pat. Um, you guys have that two parent household where both of you can work, you know, together as a team to make sure that your kids are equipped with the um, life tools and things that they need. It's a little bit. You know, tough on, and it's not me just always drawing out single parents, but it's a lot more work on us single parents that, um, you know, us to do everything ourselves versus having that partner and be like, all right, tag team, you're it. You know, <laughs> jump in and, you know, take care of this. I'm not good in that area. We have to be good in every area. Yeah. So I think you guys need to definitely. Okay, so we can clip this. So I don't want to get pressed into your bed. So, like, mm-hmm. No, the dad right. is not like involved at all. Like so, uh, for my youngest, um, we don't have to clip it. I'm okay. I want to share my experiences that way people can be, you know, it might help someone else. But 
for my youngest, he's not in the picture. I've made it very open for him and his family to be in the picture. Um, the family not there neither. No, I'm his one of his daughters. Um, <clears throat> with text here and there, but I don't think it's really have been their true intent to see my daughter. And you know, they don't know her. I can my daughter can see any of them walking down the street or you know walking by or coming. She won't know her dad from whatever. And I I've, I've tried to like show her pictures like oh this is daddy this your dad this your dad. And I'm tired of that. I've made it very clear that he can see her whenever he wants, you know, spend time where to get to know your daughter. And that's just not in his um, interest right now. So I'm not going to force it. Tired um, of the <laughs> So, and then with my older two, um, he's not involved. He'll call, text here and there. You know, they got their own phones. So you don't need to communicate to mine. But, you know, there's him like, oh, daddy, I'll talk to daddy. But he's not as involved as he should be either. He doesn't get them. He doesn't pick them up from school. doesn't help with drops off. No, nothing. So when I say I'm a single mom, I'm really a single mom doing it all by myself. Okay, but I, I asked my duty to figure it out. She didn't ask to be here, so. Yeah, that, that's that's how I feel too. You know? And she's yeah, she gonna come out at three hundred. So. Yeah, that's how I'm <laughs> yeah, Just go ahead and get yeah. the house so yeah. take care of me. You know, I got you until you get there. <laughs> yeah, for real. Uh, and then that's another thing too. Uh, like a lot of people ignore as far as college because like. A lot of um different nationalities, you know, they come from come from money, mm-hmm. and their their kids being in college, they really can just focus on school and homework. Absolutely. And opposed to more of us, we don't really come from money, so we gotta go to school, we gotta work, we mm-hmm. gotta, you know. We have so many setbacks that you know give us that less, you know, that small percentage of us um in our success. Yeah, success. Definitely. Yeah, it's definitely a lot of setbacks. And then when you're going to school, it's like you also got to learn how to balance like that social aspect mm-hmm. of it because it's like when you're going to school, it's like the people that you are around every day. It's a lot of people going to feel away. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people going to project a lot of stuff on you that you're not even um, that you're not even thinking about yourself. You're trying to figure out how you're going to survive and they think they, they, they think they mad at you because they think that you think that you better. Like, what does that even mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, that's a, that's a bad uh, situation to come come up into. But school is, you know, school is definitely cool. I, I mean, it, it's the experience is worth it. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could experience college and just you know without any kids and working. I if I can go back, I would do it. I mean, I love my kids. <laughs> I want my kids, but if I had that opportunity, I wish I could experience it. Yeah. No, yeah, I'm having a full college experience, but I'm. I thought she was gonna say you was gonna get rid of your kids. That way you oh, can do some things. Yeah, you know? no, I said I have I have mine at twenty five, so I could have <laughs> went to school if everything was in Oh, so you perfect age. So I walked across a uh, high school graduation, uh, pregnant with my oldest. So, but look at you, look how you turned out. So, shit, you, you, you. Made, you made it happen the best. Like you doing better than motherfuckers that ain't had kids. Shit, ten years after you. So you can't really look at that. You you made the best out of what you had and you're doing a lot better than a lot of motherfuckers that ain't got kids right now. So I give all that thanks to not only God but my daughter, my oldest daughter, she really she if it wasn't for her, I don't I don't I know for a fact that I wouldn't be alive. And I know a lot of people say they're like, Oh, I didn't want for my kids, I wouldn't be alive. But she that little girl really saved me. She really gave me a purpose when I was going through a dark time and and my baby. And, yeah, and the oldest will play a trick on you. <laughs> <laughs> the oldest kid that had you thinking like, this kid is stuff I can do. It's easy. It's not that bad. Yeah. It's, it's, not, you it's know, just a test second, baby. Yeah, my fault. You spin the block. Yeah, yeah. The second yeah. one is different. You know what I mean? <laughs> Even that third one. My third one. My last baby. Ooh, she keeps me on my toes. Mm-hmm. Right? That dang baby. Sometimes yeah. that's baby <laughs> different. My little baby <laughs> gangster. Yeah. yeah. That's my yeah. little baby. Yeah. baby. Yo, what's the deal, man? I just want to say, uh, I like the cast we got, man. I rock with both of y'all. You know, we all been cool for a while, 20 years. Actually, more uh, to be exact. I feel like we got the uh, good chemistry, uh, the relationship, the vibes is there, the respect, all that. So that just makes for like a good team. Great effort, man. It's, it's only up from here. We on these niggas next. We on their ass, pause. Oh, yeah, most definitely. We, we coming up, man. We coming for the big dogs, man. So watch out for us. Uh, so on the up for here, man. Uh, let's get to it, y'all. I agree. <laughs>
so sad. We're going to make a toast. Uh, New beginnings, new blessings, new levels, elevation. Definitely. Hard work, dedication, man. The word is my boy Meek, man. He say the, uh, the world is yours. You going to go get it? Oh, I'm about to <laughs> Yeah. Let's go, Definitely man. DRP, we in here, DRP. baby. Oh, yeah. For real. Let's go. Let's get it, y'all.